Now is the time that teenagers start receiving college acceptance letters and deciding where they are going to go to continue their education. But with it also comes some rejection. So how can you help a student going through that very tough time and how do you handle the rejection as well as a parent? Joining me now is Dr. Barry Norman, an educational consultant from Exert Admissions and here to talk about this problem for students and parents alike. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Let's first talk about how some students have worked years to get to this point, why is it so devastating for them? I think precisely for that reason. Mm -hmm. They've been working for years and it feels like even longer than it's been and it's been a long haul. Um, they spend an enormous amount of time on their studies. They work really hard outside of school getting involved in things. Um, little time for anything really that they would ideally like to do um, just for fun. And then they work and do everything they're supposed to. They get the letter and it doesn't work out. And that's devastating. And that's the word that they usually use actually is devastating. And for parents as well. Absolutely. Um, this is a time that's really tough for parents. They've supported their kids. They see how hard they've worked. You can also be denied at a school that everything looks right. You have all the numbers. You have the extracurriculars. There's nothing clear that says why it didn't work out for you, but it did for somebody else. And that's hard to grapple with as a student, and it's hard to grapple with for your kid. So then how do you advise families to move forward from this step? I think talking about it early is really important. Conversations about denial or rejection shouldn't happen when the denial comes for the first time. So when you're figuring out your list, when you're thinking about where to apply, you should be talking about the possibility for admission. How tough do we think it's going to be for you? And so that way you're building it in early on so it's not coming up for the first time when you find out. And I like that I hear you call it a denial instead of a rejection. <laughs> that was very specific. I, ha I have a feeling. Why is that? Um, in admissions, we never use the word reject. We always use the word deny. It is, I think, a softer word. It, um, we're denying someone's request, um, not sort of rejecting it outright. Um, and so it, it is an intentional word used in the admissions world, actually. Do you think that parents should start preparing their children for this moment years beforehand? I think it is, I mean, listen, it's an important lesson in life, right? Sure. You have to, you're going to deal with rejection at some point. And this may be and is for many students and even parents, by the way, the first time they've really heard the word no and there's nothing they can do about it. And so this is an important conversation. I wouldn't focus on the denial, you know, intently early on, but the possibility is, listen, there are a lot of great schools out there. We're going to find some great ones for you and you'll land at one of them. And the matter of fact is, is that a lot of these competitive colleges are receiving hundreds of thousands of applications. So I mean, they only have a selection that they can they can take from. So it's not like you're missing out on something where there was like one of two people. Right. And and by the way, the numbers when you see how many apply and then how many are admitted, it kind of is like being one of just a select few. And you look at the larger applicant pool and how many actually can enroll. And so it it is really it feels random, but it actually isn't on the other side but it very much feels like a lottery and people feel like there's no reason um, behind it. And sometimes discovering what that reason is, reason is, is difficult mm -hmm. from the other side. So now, do you suggest that parents need to also just take a step back and allow this to be a learning opportunity and, and growth with that child who's now really an adult? Right, to some degree. I mean, the, the student needs to process it and, and obviously get through it, but as a parent, we want to support our kids. Mm -hmm. And so it's a balancing act, like anything else as a parent. Um, so you should acknowledge the feeling of disappointment. It's very real. Even if you as the parent feel like this isn't the end of the world, it feels really bad for the student. And so you have to acknowledge that this is this is upsetting. You've worked hard. There isn't necessarily a good reason or maybe it isn't fair or you don't feel it's fair. So you give the student time to process, but then you pause a little bit and then talk about moving forward. And pausing may be, by the way, two days for some kids or, you know, a few minutes for others. Oh, thank you so much for your advice. I appreciate it. As a parent to young ones myself, it's already like your heart is walking around outside of your body, you know, so when they, they grieve, you take it right on as a parent as well. I think it's often harder for parents than for the kids. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> thank you for being here, My Dr. Pleasure. Barry Norman. I, we really appreciate it.